this is what we're working with tonight. I'm not sure if it's really a brilliant idea or not, but I have been trying to do something with Brilliant Restoration since I first saw this card because I kind of fell in love with it. You know, I just wanted to be replenished. Um, however, it's not. <laughs> it, it costs so much mana and a lot of white mana. And this is a three-color deck, so that might be foolhardy. But for the most part, like I, I just got finished telling the stream, I played eight games with this, and I think I've only had one game where I had seven mana but couldn't cast a Restoration. That might be one game too often for some but so far it hasn't been a problem casting restoration because we have lots of ways to ramp and fix our mana and all that so what we're trying to do here the way we, re we leverage brilliant restoration is we're going to drop colossal sky turtle into our yard with its we get to play with the sky turtle <laughs> super happy about that but we get to drop this in our yard with its channel ability we get to mirror shell crab and counter spells right we get to greater tunic we're only playing two copies of this probably the most made fun of card in the deck <laughs> But we, we get to play instant speed ramp in the form of Greater Tanuki and then get it back from our graveyard later with the restoration because all these are enchantments or artifacts. Same thing is true of Sunblade Samurai. There's only one copy of Sam in the deck, but I do think that Sami Zayn might be okay. So we can drop it in our graveyard, make sure we get that third land drop. White Man is obviously very important to the deck. The two life might be cool against aggro. When it comes back, it's a 4-4 Vigilance. Sometimes we can just play it as a 4-4 Vigilance. Some turns when we play it, like, if we play it on curve after an Essica's Chariot, it can crew the Chariot. That's kind of cool. So, there's a few things going on with Samurai, but I don't think we need to play more than one because we only have three planes in the deck. So, I don't, I don't think we can really play too many of these. Um, aside from that, there's also Careful Cultivation in the deck, which is an enchantment that comes back with a Restoration. But this is also Instant Speed Ramp. So, note how much the deck is playing at Instant Speed, right? We have Careful Cultivation, 2 mana Instant Speed, Faithful Absence, 2 mana Instant Speed. Um, Sunblade Samurai can be done at instant speed. Um, Greater Tanuki, Mirror Shell Crab, Colossal Sky Turtle. Again, all of these cards can be done end of our opponent's turn or during their combat step or whatever. So we're doing a lot of instant speed stuff here. But we do have some mid-rangey nuts going on, right? Like we've got Network Termo and the Celestis. A couple of reasons that I'm playing these. We need to fix our mana for white. Uh, we need to be able to, that we, to cast Brilliant Restoration as reliably as possible. So... I figured that'd be a way to do that. We also need to ramp, and these cards do that. You know, they ramp and they fix our mana. So that's good, but they also work with Teferi, who I'm not even really sure goes in the stack, to be, to be quite honest. But Teferi is also a form of ramp. Um, it allows us to untap a creature like this mana dork, an artifact like a network terminal, and a land. So that's like a ton of ramp. We can cast Brilliant Restoration on turn five sometimes after Teferi, depending on how we've set the game up. So that can be important. That can be important. Uh, but often casting Resto on 5 is not the best plan in the world if you haven't channeled a lot of stuff. But it can be okay. One way or the other, I do like Teferi in this deck. I felt like this deck, the Bant color, color combination, was a good like opportunity, an excuse to play Teferi. And so far, he's been pretty good in bridging the gap from sort of early game into some of the dumber stuff we can do in the late game. He helps us find cards. He's a good like lightning rod for removal. Sometimes he takes some pressure from an opponent's attack off of us. So there's a lot of stuff that Teferi does do. Asika's Chariot's in the deck, too, another mid-range thing that we're doing. But this is good for gumming up board states, again, helping us get deeper into the game state. Sometimes it's a good attacker, obviously. Um, we have a number of things that are tokens, like we can copy the Careful Cultivation token so we can have more ramp. Sometimes that's important, right? Um, so Asika's Chariot's pretty cool. It can come back with a Brilliant Restoration, too, if they kill it. That's cool, because it puts a ton of stuff on the battlefield all at once. Um, there's also, though, Tamiyo. This was a two-of. When I posted the deck to Twitter, this was a two-of. I have actually not been super impressed with Aunt Tammy so far. Um, I have aspirations of her minus X being really good in a deck that has all these channel things, right? Because if we get to, you know, seven, we can just bring back, like, a Sky Turtle, and that's probably okay. Um, but there are still really good play lines with her, right? Like, if we play Teferi or Essex Chariot. On turn four, our opponent kills one of those things. We can just play Tamiyo on the next turn and get that thing back and still have a Planeswalker. Tamiyo plus Asika's Chariot is an interaction that I'm actually really excited about in like a Simic deck. Or maybe a different Bant or Sultide deck, right? Just maybe not this one. But one way or the other, Tamiyo and Asika's Chariot feels really good together. One more thing, uh, I kind of mentioned this before we started deck teching, but I just want to bring up again. This deck looks like it's not doing anything before like turn three. But it actually has so many turn two plays, right? Faithful Absence, turn two plays, it's two mana. But there's also Careful Cultivation, so that gives us six turn two plays. 
Um, there's Sunblight Samurai, so that's seven turn two plays. There's Doomscar, so that's 11 turn two plays. Um, and then there's uh, Colossal Sky Turtle, so there's actually 15 two mana plays in this deck, but there's only one two drop. So I think it's another like cool sneaky thing about this deck. I love the way this deck plays around with its curve, right? Like Greater Tanuki is a three drop. Mirror Shell Crab is a three drop. Um, Doomscar is a three drop sometimes. Born to Drive can be a three drop. Touch of the Spirit Realm, three drop. Careful, careful Cultivation, almost never a three drop, but can be. Term Network Terminal, three drop. Celestis, three drop. So there's actually a lot of three drop action too, but it doesn't really look like there's that much three drop action. So just a really cool curve philosophy in this deck as well. All the way down to Tamiya, which can be a four drop or a five drop. Like sometimes you want to play a Seeker's Chariot on four, but you also want to play Tamiya on four. But Tamiya gives you the ability to play a Seeker's Chariot on four, Tamiya on five, right? So like, I, there's a lot of cool curve stuff going on in the deck. You have to kind of big brain sometimes. And I'm not so good at that. So we'll, we'll see what happens once we get into the arena. But I do like this deck in concept. And it's been doing pretty well in practice so far. But we'll see how it does. In the, in the light of the stream, in the dazzling light of Friday night here on Tuesday night. Let's go. This is not a good keep. So why are you keeping it? I don't know, but I feel like I should. I don't know, it just feels right. <laughs> Which is uh, not a good argument for anything. <laughs> they duress us. Ooh, neat. Can't take either one of these, can you? Nice. Yeah, you take that, Safari. See if I care. Well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> I got a land. I'll take the land, though. So we hold up Sky Turtle, because I'll almost certainly have a creature. Yeah. Oh, Disciple. Oh, it's Turgrid. Turgrid is not necessarily what we wish to play against. It's really not. Do I want the terminal? I think I'll drop that. Actually, Turgrid is really good against us because this the channel ability, it's discard. It literally is like discarding the card. So Turgrid is like a nightmare matchup for us. <laughs> so that's fun. Comes an acquisitions expert. They get to take one of our lands. Also, their creatures are not very good for bouncing. So there's that. This is not a good first match. <laughs> I guess you're asking for it, though. A lot of people playing Turgrid out there nowadays. Came up against it last stream. <laughs> I guess we do have Sky Turtle to return stuff we discard to our hand, so, like, there's that. Network Terminal. We still have to, like, really wait for them to cast a real card, you know? Although, what do they cast this turn that we care about? Like, they're not casting Turgrid this turn, so I think we can get away with Network Terminal. I don't know, though. I'm trying for it. Sky Turtle's so bad against these guys. Get in. 17 we go down to. And they do nothing, so I guess it was right to do that. We do have a Doom Scar now. Can foretell that and still uh, crab, so maybe Terminal was correct. So I need another white mana here. We need green. <laughs> but I guess we have terminal for that. Let's foretell the Doomscar. And say go. Doomscar will be good if they do land their Turgrid ever. Maybe we're in for a long one. Ooh, Varagoth. Let me take some damage this game, but I guess we just have to get used to it. I think... Hmm, are they stuck on lands? Is there anything in here I really need to get back? I guess I could get back to Teferi and play it. But is that really good enough? One, two, three, then they just get to Varigoth. It's probably not what we want them doing, so... I think it's better just to tempo for now. Get a land, which isn't really what we wanted. It's like, maybe I should have just Doom Scarred, kept up the uh, turtle. Especially considering we would have had six minutes. Yeah, yeah, that would have been the play, right? Doom Scar, hold up Mirror Shell Crab. If they don't give us a reason to crab, then we um, just get the Teferi back EOT. It's a Sky Turtle. That, maybe that's what we should have done. We will see. Opponent probably just very gothic in here, but who knows? I know we have Crab. 
You get one more mana, we can restoration, and it's not a terrible one. So like we'll, we'll end up getting back the Sky Turtle and probably the Crab. There's the Varagoth. Sure. I guess here we burn the Doom Scar on our turn. We've got a 13 when they attack. They still have a mana open and something to do with it, too, because it hasn't just immediately progressed to the attack step. I wonder if it's a Malakir Rebirth. It, you know, that that's a card that they could play here. I wonder if it's a Shambling Ghast. But if it were a Ghast or an Eye Twitch or something, that you'd think they would play it. Why? Why are you scooping? Why are you doing... No! No! I wanted to play Magic. I want to play Magic so much. Maybe here's here's my here's my hypothesis, right? Is they know we have a they know we have a card foretold. It's probably Doomscar, right? <laughs> but even 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 if even if they don't know it's a Doomscar or whatever, um, they're staring at a Turgid in their hand. They don't have any lands, right? They've been kind of stuck on lands. They just got their fourth one. They're staring at a Turgid in their hand, and they know we have a Mirror Shell Crab. So like they know they'll never they'll never cast that Turgid. <laughs> So, like, maybe they just decided, I don't want to play this game anymore. It's time for dinner. Like, something, you know. Two losses to Allard Onting later. Opponent goes first. Four games. Four opponent goes first. I'm going to start salting slightly, and I apologize for that. But when you literally can't go first all night, like, that's, it, it objectively sucks. So. And with cards like Careful Cultivation and Mirror Shell Crab, like, the, the, like look at the tempo, right? Like, this deck really needs to go first, so... feel my blood pressure going up a little bit. That's Arena for you. That's just Arena. Hot shot mechanic on turn one for the opponent. God. White source. I know we don't have any white cards, but I'm still going white source turn one. We'll go blue source here. Green source there. Man, one of the big reasons I did that is turn one, one drop. We're going to need a Doom Scar if we draw it. So, but for now, I'll probably just use the bounce on Colossal Sky Turtle. Get a little tempo. I could also, well, a play I didn't talk about, but we can, we don't have access to right now because I didn't play the Green Source turn one. Is that uh, you can careful cultivation and discard it on turn two at the end of your opponent's turn, and then surprise turn three Essica's Chariot. <laughs> Which is pretty sweet. What are, what are you? Create a 1-1 one, one when it attacks? Oh, who cares? It's probably a good card. <laughs> Let's get some tempo here and return the hotshot to their hand. They can't play it again. Guess we'll get our green mana here. Draw the Doom Scar next turn. That's going to feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we want them to try and crew and get in and we'll just bounce it but we could also counter something with crab I wonder what the better play is if they crew and get in they, they have a board all of a sudden mobilizer mech they can still play their hot shot but this card's pretty cool. Mobilizer mech. But they still get in. Hot shot. They get in for five, six here. Good lord, six? We're already at ten? God. Sick. We're gonna draw our Doom Scar and not be able to play it. I just I feel it coming. Well, let's get a blocker, a blocking board here. How do we win this game from here? How do we actually do it? So we have to draw a white source and a doom scar, and that's our portable Hulk. Come on, come on. That's a good card though, and you know we had to give them a target for it eventually. It shouldn't be surprising. Like we shouldn't do shock Pikachu face because they have a portable hole. <laughs> is all I'm saying. Well, a Seekers Chariot comes out to play. They kill one of our kitties with their portable hole. They're jerks. Prodigy's prototype. 
second one. It's the 3 4 that cruise to make a 1 1. Or when it attacks, you make 1 1s. Offering a trade. I will take. Yay, we got the land. So now we can Tamio. I've been wanting to do this play like all night. We Tamio and bring back the chariot. And that makes their trade pretty bad. They wanted to trade so that they could get in with Prodigy's prototype cleanly. But this makes it much, much harder for them to do that, so. Cool. Thank god we got that. I was really hoping we get the fifth land so we could do precisely that right there. Fifth land for them. Crab is still maybe a potentially okay card here. Can't play it right now, but like maybe next turn. The Omen Keel. Nice. Good to see you, Kosima. I do like Kosima. They're gonna do it. Here they come. And Scoop! What? No! <laughs> we, keep, we keep getting opponents that Scoop for, like... Ostensibly, no reason. Like, why did you? Why did you do that? Why did you scoop? Why are you so upset? I don't understand. I will say that in, um, in a couple of turns, we still need a white source. But you know, maybe we get the white source of broken restoration. We bring back crab and colossal sky turtle, and these two. Yeah, we can bring back two crabs, two sky turtles. Like it was. Eventually, it was going to be disgusting. Games. <laughs> Holy crap! We go first. And we have lands. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> what are the chances? Let's play Cascade turn one. There's a brilliant restoration. Let's White Source turn two. Say go. Should be able to ramp here. Or maybe we Fateful Absence. I don't know. Druid class. You get a nice for that. Let's cultivate carefully. And then let's Teferi. Look at that. Surprise, surprise, turn three Teferi. And never see it coming. Should I actually... Hold on. Well, if I untap stuff, we have a five loyalty Teferi, and we have Fateful Absence up. up. If I draw a card, that's good. That's just a good thing to do. So. Does our opponent have a haste threat next turn? I don't think so. Oh, come on! We can't think about it! We can't think about it for a second! <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we're three and two. <laughs> uh, we didn't even... It's not like we roped. We weren't even close to roping on that decision. <laughs> yeah, the scooping. <laughs> the scooping is going on tonight. I guess that's good luck. You guys see uh, Ziggy asleep on the cat tree over here? You see this little baby? You see that baby, Bob? He's so cute. <laughs> I'm gonna rep oh, the cat tree is back. The cat, <laughs> the cat cam is back, ladies and gentlemen, just because Ziggy looks so great tonight. He's so cute. He's such a cute kitty. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're, oh yeah, we're playing magic. Oh my god, we go first. And we can cultivation. Let's, okay. Let's try it. Same star we had last time. We're a little down on white sources, which I don't love. But we do have Network Terminal and no white cards in our hands. So maybe it'll work out. Rory PC has decided to mull. Stream root Cascade. They go with tapped Necro Blossom Snarl. We haven't played against Golgari tonight. Let's see what that's about. I'll take the white source here off of a branch law pathway and say go. Prosperous innkeeper. There's a party going on right here. Alright, our turn. Let's carefully, carefully cultivate. We get a land. I really would have liked a four drop there. That would have been <laughs> super sweet. But what we can do, that's actually kind of neat, is we can go second white source here, and we can network terminal. 
And we still have the mana for Sky Turtle. So, cool. That worked out. And we may need to Sky Turtle something here. They Sedge More Witch. Okay. I'm so tempted to do this. That I'm going to, let's block and then Sky Turtle, yes, yes, pay the life, I don't care. I just thought that would be cool to do. <laughs> terminal. Now we can terminal our terminal, dog. So I heard you like terminals. We can also use this Born to Draft to uh, block the Sedgemore Witch eventually. But I think I might rather discard it to draw a card, to be honest. You gonna say go? They do. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I really shouldn't be doing this, but I'm gonna drop the Born to Drive. It'd probably be better as two creatures. Okay, so do we drop the Born to Drive or the Crab? What could they be doing next turn? Like, maybe we want the crab. Well, if we drop the crab, that's something good for restoration, which we might be able to play next turn. We can't. We can cherry it. Which I like more than Born to Drive, I think. When here, we can still network terminal. So, Well, no. No, we can't. But that's okay. Dimagoth Titan. That's a good card. Oh, is this the Tend the Pest deck? That'd be sweet. <laughs> if it were. Alright, our turn. There's the land. So, let's Restoration. They do have four cards in their hands. a lot of cards. So, I'm not actually super confident in this Restoration. But I'm going to give it a shot. Okay. So, yay, we did the thing. But is it good enough against the 1110? If they can tend the pest, it's going to be... Probably not going to be good enough. And then once they do that, they plumb the forbidden, and that sucks. <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe they, like, go so far as to Liliana here to set up the plumb the forbidden. That would be really sick. Sedgemore number two. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Looking at our dudes. They don't get in. Hmm. We draw a land. It's not great. But what we can do here that I kind of like. I should have probably saved you to discard to a network terminal. But what we can do is throw this born to drive on our colossal sky turtle. Because he is born to drive. A big giant sky turtle driving around? Come on. How do you not love that? <laughs> Let's get in for some flying damage, kids. Hold on to your butt belts. <laughs> We're coming in. Bang! Put him at 10. Can we win this, this stock car race? I don't think so. Yep, there's the 10 the pests. Uh-oh. That's a bunch of bugs. That's 13 bugs. So many bugs. 13, 40, 15, 15, 15, 19. So we do have to block a Sedgemore Witch. <laughs> oh no, they village rights. So now it changes our blocking math. We have to block twice. But we don't mind blocking so much. It's just this can't. This number can't get to 17, and it didn't. So now they have to kill. Oh no, we have to kill the Eye Twitch. Well. Well, we, we might have a chance. We might have a chance at being able to do that. They have to sort of alpha here. Yeah. They hold back the witches. Okay, so we have to let them through. We have to let them through. Because if we kill pests, we lose life. Or they, they gain life, I mean to say. So we have to take this shot in the mouth.
they may have a way to sacrifice a pest, which would suck. So that would not... That would be butt sacks. Now, even if they sack a pest... Okay, they deadly dispute. Okay. <laughs> you go to 12, but that's fine. Because this... Crap, we do have to, like, play a creature. It's gonna suck. Crap, 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 crap on a crap cracker. Uh, slim game of margins here. Yeah, they could massacre for one. What if they do that? That would be hilarious. <laughs> Ooh, it's our turn. It's a Teferi. What does that do? Not enough. Now, if we play our Teferi, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We have four mana left when we play our Teferi. Really, five, six. We could have six mana left when we play our Teferi. So we could dig for something and find it. We could. Does that thing need to be green? So we're spending most of our green mana here. It doesn't matter. Well, we have to tap at least one terminal to do this so we can untap it. So let's do that. Come on, Big Daddy T. Find something good for me. No. Look at this garbage. <laughs> Look at this absolute garbage. <laughs> what was that? Seriously, T. Sweet T. Come on, man. Come on, dog. Okay, so what we need to do is tap you... Probably. What I'm looking for is, I think, a Fateful Absence or a Colossal Sky Turtle here, but it still won't matter. Tap another untapped Asika's Chariot you control. We get a. Are you serious? We get a rock! Oh my god! <laughs> uh, here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put the Careful Cultivation on the Eye Twitch, and then I'm gonna say good game. <laughs> so stupid. Damn it. <laughs> Such a close game, dude. Opponent goes first. We're not really doing much until turn three. I don't like that. I think I will throw that one back. This is a little better, but it's a two lander. I'll put back restoration. I think Tanuki's good here if we get a third land. But we have to, there it is. Alright. This will do cave turn one. Yeah. Yeah. Druid class again. Okay. Seen that a couple of times tonight. Interesting. I think I'll take a green off of that. I was actually considering the white mana. <laughs> Blue green druid class. I don't think we've seen this one. I don't think. They gain a life when they play their uh, Otawara. That's interesting. Network disruptor in a blue green druid class deck. What are you up to? That's neat. I could get into that. Just, you know, what are you doing? Why would you play these two together? Like, I'm not saying, like, he shouldn't, or they shouldn't be doing that. It's just, like, I'm interested in why. Like, I'm curious. Take the blue mana in case they give us something to counterspell, which I imagine they will. <laughs> you know? They're doing something tricky. Something really tricky. Unless they're not. Maybe it's just, like, cast... 20 blue or green spells, and then you like, <laughs> threw all these together. <laughs> but I don't know. I, my, my alarm bells are ringing. All right. They level two their class. They're not going to give us something to counterspell. It's all right. I guess we'll ramp. Take a damage. An attacking disruptor. They play another Atara. 
They assume they really don't need removal this game, I guess. Odd that their class just procced. It's weird. Alright, so now we ramp with Tanuki. What do we want? Blue, maybe? I don't know, we probably just want white for the restoration. They've never read Greater Tanuki yet, or before. You can't counter it, it's not counterable. That's the cool thing about Crab, guys. This is an uncounterable counter spell. It's so good in that regard. It's, it's actually not a bad card at all. Alright, let's take a we got two crabs. We can only play one, but we got two crabs in an absence. That's not bad. Although I worry, I'm really, really worried about this game. <laughs> Our opponent can ramp with their druid class now. They skyclave relic, so they're a ramp deck. They're probably just trying to like coma or something. I probably should have just countered that. It's like, I didn't think it was very important, but I, I honestly, I probably should have just countered that. Careful cultivation, so we'll say go. We're at 18. We've taken a couple of shots in the mouth from the Disruptor. They're at 23. They gain life from playing lands. But I don't think life totals in this stage of the game are going to matter too much. Six mana open. So, we're not guaranteed to counter something with Crab. That kind of sucks. Plus, they have three, like, real cards in their hand. We know that, because otherwise they probably would have played a second land. They can, with Druid Class's ability. But maybe they'll just go for, like, a huge shot here. Yeah, they're tapping a lot of mana. You gonna up the Druid Class, making the Fateful Absence the token? Yep. Get that out of here. Get that out of here. Little land destruction action for you. Nice. Should I ramp this turn? I don't really plan on casting this Doom Scar anytime soon, so I think I should. Really would like. This is our fourth white source. Really would like. Something to counter here. But now they're in a situation where they're like, they have to give us something to counter spell. They have to. And yeah, I know, I could have um, gotten in. But I don't want to. I want all my mana open, even though we can, we can double mirror shells. <laughs> I wonder if they figured it out. <laughs> if they know what's like going on here. Yeah, they're looking around. I wonder if they have something that takes stuff out of our yard. In blue and green, I'm not sure they would, but then maybe it's an artifact or something. They just randomly play that thing that exiles our entire graveyard, and it's only like one mana. I think that would not feel good. All right, they're looking. They're thinking. All right, they pop the clue. They're never going to give us something to counter. <laughs> Come on. Cast a spell, man. I need to counter stuff so that these are in our yard. Oh my god, are you serious? This is a play. They're just playing the ultra long game. <laughs> Let's take this network disruptor all the way. Hey, we can counter that. No, we can't. That's funny. Should I just drop two crabs in my yard? And then, yeah, let's do this. Let's go. I don't have... Oh my god, Dev. You moron. Well, let's see if they pay it. Let's see if they actually pay it. I kind of don't mind. Oh my god, they didn't. They didn't. And they're not going to do anything else? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I think we got off easy on that one. <laughs> Let's play the Teferi here. We could play. What happens? What happens if we Restoration? Tanuki, Crab, careful. Hmm. I would like to get rid of the other Crab in our hand, to be honest. All right, Teferi, come on down and untap this dork. Well, dude. Hmm. Why don't we tap you? <laughs> untap you. Untap the blue source because we have to. Because I'm stupid and I always think we have more, one more source of a thing than we actually have. <laughs> and now we can counter something with crab. So I feel good about that. 
Come on in. Come on in for a damage. Put him at 24. It's going to make all the difference, I promise. Right, they're going to do something about Teferi here, maybe? We can counter that. Nope. Six mana. If they drop a land, they can, like, coma, and we can just body them. <laughs> I really want that to happen. Even better, like Cyclone Summoner. That would be that would feel fantastic. <laughs> Maybe we should play Cyclone Summoner as a ramp payoff. Return all these dudes to our hand. Now we have like counter spells and bounce spells. <laughs> it's probably a dumb idea, <laughs> but it's an idea. We welcome those here. They get in. They're not gonna come in on us. They don't think that that's important. Interesting. We get a land. They didn't give us anything to counter. Come on, man. Come on, please. <laughs> I want to counter stuff so bad. Let's look at the top three and grab something. Ooh. Another Teferi is probably the right call. Um, Born to Drive isn't terrible either. It really isn't. But I think I want Sammy. Sammy Zane here. I really want them to tap out on their turn, like, really badly. <laughs> yeah, we'll still have green mana if I do that. Plus we can, yeah. I'll discard Sam. Main phase, just because I want the, the, to drop the land that we get. It's like, I'm a little worried about playing Restez into all of this open blue mana. And if we're going to do that, I'd like to be able to cast the Resto and then Mirror Shell Crab any Counterspell. But they need to have some mana tap down if that's the road we're going to go down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we'll have 8, 9, 10, 11 possible mana. Archmage Emeritus, what? Well, let's at least make it to where they can't cast anything else this turn, and it puts a crab in our yard. And I think this gives us the play line that we, that we want. They tap down a ton of mana to do that. <coughs> and now on our turn, let's say they don't pay the mana here. Or if they do pay the mana, okay, they, get, they want their Emeritus that badly. So now, they come in on T... We draw for the turn. So they're just tapped out. We don't even have to worry about, you know, keeping mana untapped. Now, we do want to tap this guy, though, because we're going to untap him with Teferi. Probably. Yeah, we are. Hmm. Let's play Terminal first, because we can. Let's bring back Careful Cultivation and attach it here. And look at all that stuff. Look, we did it. We did the thing. We have done the thing, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so let's untap this guy. Let's tap this guy. Uh, let's, ta let's untap this guy. And let's untap our blue source. And I guess we try to get in, because why not? Whew, all right. I really meander my way through some of these turns. <laughs> but we get there. You know? <laughs> I think we arrived to the correct conclusion. But um, still, yeah, that was the that was the best... <laughs> that was the best restoration of the night. Opponent looking at all of our stuff. Nice stuff. Hey, Ziggy, stop. Stop trying to do stuff to your sister. It's mean. <laughs> That's rule number one. Just don't do stuff to your sister. Oh, opponents on the, they're they're roping. They have hauled out the rope. I imagine they have plays though. Four cards in their hand, they have plays. The, oh, why are you playing that card? <laughs> okay. What are you doing? What? I, I, uh, <laughs> cool. Maybe it's actually really good now. Maybe Thieving Skydiver is amazing now. With all the artifacts and, like, uh, vehicles and stuff that people are playing. Like, maybe Thieving Skydiver nabs 
a Fox McCloud like super early in the game. Like, maybe, who knows? Maybe. They come in at teabag. Mr. T. To you. We get a Colossal Sky Throw. That's awesome. <laughs> Alright, I think we just want to tap something down and get in for damage. I don't know that we need the card here, to be honest. Hold on. Hold the phone. Hold the whole damn telephone open here. So you're telling me I can just sky turtle. Is there anything I want in my yard? No, not really. Not better than a sky turtle. Not really. <laughs> I should have tapped the guy. Why didn't I tap the guy? Should have tapped the guy. To do that. Well, no, no, I shouldn't tap the guy, because I want to choose up to one target artifact and tap it. Creature and tap it. And one land and untap it. I guess it's the cave. Sure. Should be just coming in with cave, you know. <laughs> Alright, let's go. What now? What now, Wooly Thoctor? I like that card. It's like a 3-mana 5-4 in Naya colors, and that's all it was, just a 3-mana vanilla 5-4. That used to be a really playable magic card, even if you had to work to get it in terms of, like, colors. I don't know if it'd be as playable nowadays. <laughs> that's a pretty good play. March is good there. March is pretty funny there. I'll give it to them. <laughs> All right. Is that your sweeper? Is that cool? Oh! Oh! <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Jinkataxius, let's go. <laughs> they actually played a Jinkataxius against us, dude. Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay, I like it. <laughs> I'm into that, man. Wow, I'm considering Doom Scarring. Although the first thing we cast every turn is, is countered. Oh my goodness. Did you know I could block? Are you aware that I can block creatures? Alright. <laughs> and they scoop. Alright. Oh, good game though, opponent. Man, they played some awesome stuff at the end of that game, didn't they? They played Archmage Emeritus and Jengataxius in their deck. Thieving Skydiver March. Like, what a cool deck. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I like it, man. I support it. <laughs>